It appears that duct tape in 7 Days to Die 1.0 is a bit of a bottleneck for most people, so today I'm going to teach you how to farm it. Let's get to it. Did you know every part of the duct tape recipe is farmable? Well, it is. And I'm going to tell you how to farm each part of it, and this is going to be a short and sweet and fast video, so buckle up and pay attention. To make duct tape, you need one glue and seven cloth. Glue is made with either bones and water or super corn and water. Let's start off with farming cloth. Cloth is super easy to farm. One cotton equals one cloth. You can farm cotton very easily. All you need to do is have maxed out living off the land and farmer helmet, farmer chest piece, and the farmer boots. Ideally, you want tier six of all of this, but at any tier of these three pieces are going to help you significantly when it comes to harvesting more and increasing your chance to harvest seeds. I highly recommend doing at least a four by four plot of cotton, if not more. Doing at least a four by four plot with tier five or higher gear and maxed out living off the land is not only extremely renewable, you're also going to be swimming in resources. If you're looking for a good farming, just all around base support build, I have a build guide for that. Check out the link down in the description to find out more. And aside from having a living off the land and the farmer gear, you're also going to need to be reading the seeds books or the farming books in order to learn how to craft cotton seeds. Because while most of the time you'll harvest most of the seeds you need you'll still need to craft some in order to refill your 4x4 plot. All right great now that we got cloth out of the way let's move on to glue. First off super corn this is going to be much later in the game but eventually you should get the recipe needed for super corn then you should find some super corn seeds or at least maybe be able to buy some from the trader. Once you do this the same farming setup that I recommend for farming infinite cloth with cotton will work work for the super corn as well. This should leave you in more than enough super corn for part of the glue mixture. It's also much more efficient because it only takes two super corn and one water to make a glue where the lowest you can get for bones is four bones and one water. But early game, you're most likely going to be using bones and water in order to craft your glue. The only way to farm water is just make a whole bunch of dew collectors and get the upgrades for or the dew collectors. I wish there was some other magical way to farm insane amounts of water, but making the dew collectors and having at least five of them, if not more, is going to have you literally swimming in water. Once you have all of these upgraded, they should be making you two water about every four hours. The dew collector will hold two water in each slot and it has three slots, which means you should be able to harvest all three slots twice a day if you're diligent about it and that should if you have five of these going be about 60 water a day. I know getting multiples of these things can be a little bit on the pricey side but it's well worth the investment if you need a ton of water because you need a ton of duct tape. So start investing in your dew collectors early. Okay let's talk about bones. It is 100% possible to farm bones and the easiest way to do it is to exploit horde night. So there is a mechanic that prevents you from being in a vehicle or on a bike and just riding around all night during horde night. And that is when you get in a vehicle or on a bike, it will spawn these crazy vultures that will spit at you and attack you and slow you down and basically lead to your demise. Because of this, we can exploit this by getting on a bicycle inside of a horde base. So the setup for this is pretty easy. This uses my go-to horde base design. And if you don't know what that is, I'll also link that down below, check out that video. I'm not going to get into the overall setup for the main design here, but I am going to talk about how to easily farm the birds. So in the roof of the structure, you need a two block hole. Then you want to line the inside of that hole with the block labeled pole double. This leaves a gap big enough for corpses to fall through, but it's too small for the vultures to actually get through. Then on both sides of that two block hole, you want to put blade traps. Wire your blade traps up. On the front, of the structure, you want to put a pole going out and then you want to put a blade trap there as well. When the zombies run up the ramp and across this thin pole, they'll hit the blade trap. The blade trap will do damage to them, knock off limbs and knock them off the pole. This way you don't have to deal with them as much because it will still spawn zombies. It just spawns the birds as well. Do note that there's a fine balance here because you can only have so many spawns at a time per person. So if you're not on the bike, it'll just start spawning lots 
lots of zombies. If you're on the bike, it will spawn the birds and spawn the zombies. But if you have too many zombies going and they're not dead, then it will never spawn the birds because it can't because all your spawn slots are filled by zombies. You can do this with one person, although it's very difficult. It's much better with two people because you can have one person standing at the front of the horde base mowing down zombies and harvesting birds, running repairs while the other person just hangs out on the bike. If you're doing it solo, you're going to have to get on and off the bike. It's not too bad if you have the blade traps running because the blade traps will help keep the zombies down, allowing for birds to spawn. However, if you don't have blade traps, which I'm going to talk about here in a second, it's a little bit more of a pain in the butt. Anyway, I digress. So if you have your blade traps going, all you do when Horde Night starts, before it starts, just get on your bike, place it down inside your horde base and get on it. Wait patiently, be right underneath the hole. The birds will spawn. They'll fly into the blade traps, they'll die. They'll either hang there at the top where you can farm them in the gap or the corpses will fall down on you. Once you get a bunch of corpses, you just farm them, then get back on the bike. Now, if you don't have blade traps yet, you want to do the same setup, except you don't need the pole out in the front because you're not going to put a blade trap on it. You only need the single pole coming towards you and you do the same setup with the hole in the ceiling. The birds can't get through it. I advise using a machine gun and just firing at the birds as they show up above trying to get to you. You're just going to alternate back and forth between the birds and the zombies, ensuring that the birds have spawn slots available to them. Once you've killed all the birds, you kill a bunch of zombies, quickly hop back on the bike, wait for more birds to spawn, get off the bike, rinse and repeat, all while running repairs. Speaking of repairs, let's quickly talk about the resources. So you're going to need a ton of steel to repair the blade traps if you're running the blade traps. You're also going to need a bunch of cobble or cement if you have it upgraded to cement. I do advise upgrading the base to cement as the front of it will be able to take that much more damage. You'll never really need to upgrade the top of this thing to cement as the vultures don't do a ton of damage to blocks. But you will be running a lot of repairs so I do advise making sure that you have enough resources available to you to run said repairs. Because you're not going to be able to attack the zombies at the front of the base while you're on the bike so the front of the base is going to be taking a lot of damage. Once again, this is ideally done with two people, but it is doable as a single person. Once Horde Night is over and it's all said and done, you should have more than enough bones to make a ton of glue. You can also get a lot of bones if you max out Huntsmen and go around harvesting animals. They're going to give you a lot more bones than they normally would. Combining all these methods gives you an easily renewable source of all the crafting components necessary to make duct tape. And this, along with just your normal going out and looting should ensure that you have more than enough duct tape to craft anything and everything that you could need to craft that includes duct tape. All right, and that is it for this one. Told you it was going to be short and sweet. Hopefully you found it helpful and informational. If you did, please consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos. And if you're looking for some more of my content, you can find a link to another one of my videos on the screen right now. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.